Hello. Today's lecture is on mathematical methods for physics, linear algebra, lecture seven, types of matrices. Okay, uh, let's go to my notes. Uh, today we're going to consider Hermitian. Uh, let me just change my pointer. Uh, today we're going to consider Hermitian, skew Hermitian, unitary matrices, and orthogonal matrices. These are important definitions. We now consider four classes of complex matrices, which are, as an example, which are, are important in quantum mechanics. The A bar denotes the complex conjugate of A, i.e. replace each element by its complex conjugate. A bar transpose denotes the conjugate transpose of A, i.e. take the transpose of A, then replace each element by its complex conjugate. Let's go to the whiteboard to emphasize those uh, definitions. Okay, let me choose a matrix A, a complex matrix, with, i.e. a matrix with complex elements. Uh, 3 plus 2i, 1 minus 4i, 5 minus 3i, 6 minus 2i. Now, the bar indicates take the complex conjugate of each element. So that's 3 minus 2i. 1 plus 4i, 5 plus 3i, 6 plus 2i. Uh, next, let's take the transpose. You may remember this from before. Take the column. First column becomes the first row. So 3 plus 2i, 5 minus 3i. Second column becomes a second row. Right, now I'm going to combine them to get my uh, definite, the second definition I gave you. This is the transpose of the complex conjugate. And I can do this in either order. I can either take the transpose and then take the complex conjugate, or I can take the, sorry, take the complex conjugate first, and then the transpose, I'll take the transpose first, and then take the complex conjugate. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to choose to take the transpose and then take the complex conjugate. So I'm combining two operations. 3 minus 2i. 5 plus 3i, 1 plus 4i, 6 plus 2i. Okay, uh, so that's my complex conjugate transpose. Now we come to some important definitions now. Having made the definitions of the, uh, of the bar representing the complex conjugate, the T, the transpose, and then the combination, the bar and the transpose. The, the, all of these are important definition. A matrix is Hermitian if the complex conjugate transpose is equal to the original matrix. A matrix A is skew Hermitian if the complex conjugate of the transpose is equal to the minus of the original matrix. A unitary matrix, again another important definition, if the complex conjugate transpose is equal to the inverse of the original matrix. An orthogonal matrix is a special case of a unitary matrix. Um, just to repeat the above definition of a unitary matrix, complex conjugate transpose is equal to the inverse. In a special case when all elements are real, this becomes an orthogonal matrix. So we don't need the bar there because obviously the complex conjugate of real matrix is equal to itself. So the definition of an orthogonal matrix, again, an important definition. Um, 
I think we may have come across it before. The transpose of the matrix is equal to its inverse. Um, and in, and a, an example of this is the rotation matrix. So, and the polygonal matrix is a real matrix for which the inverse equals its transpose. I gave this in a previous lecture, but let me just uh, repeat this one again because uh, the rotation matrix itself is an important matrix, and it is an example of an orthogonal matrix. So let's go to the rotation matrix as an example. Let me call it M. Cos theta, sine theta. You can check that this does rotate by taking a one of the unit vectors, say i, and uh, take it along the x-axis, and then apply this matrix to see how it rotates in the xy plane. Okay, this is my rotation matrix. Now, what we're saying in the Fogel matrix, the transpose is equal to the inverse. So let me take the transpose. Column becomes a row. Column becomes a row. Now, to check that this is true, we simply multiply the matrices out to see if we get the unit matrix. So let me do that. The order uh, doesn't matter. Generally, with matrix multiplication, the order of multiplication does matter. But in the case of an orthogonal matrix, you can multiply either way around. This is equal to the inverse, which should equal the unit matrix. So let's do that. It's a little bit long, so I hope I've got enough room. Right, the first thing is cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Probably I shouldn't need to write this down because we know this is one of the trigonometric identities and we know this is equal to y. This row and this column. Now I'll do this row and this column. So this time I've got minus cos theta, sine theta, plus sine theta, cos theta. You can see that this is going to be zero. Now I do minus cos, minus sine theta, cos theta. Minus sine theta, cos theta. Sorry. Minus sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta. Then the last one is minus minus sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. These cancel to get zero. I'll have to write this, uh, let me box this off. So let me write my results up here. M transpose equals M, the inverse. And we can see from here that I get 1, 0, 0, 1, which is equal to the unit matrix. Okay, that finishes that example. Uh, theorem 2. Determinant of a unitary matrix. The determinant of a unitary matrix A has absolute value 1. Um, the determinants of a unitary matrix may have a complex, va uh, complex value. So the condition is that if for, for any unitary matrix, the magnitude of the determinant must be 1. Whether it's complex or real, the value must be 1.
an orthogonal matrix, uh, the determinant of an orthogonal matrix equals plus one or minus one. In other words, the determinant only has real values, and those real values are restricted to plus one or minus one. An orthogonal transformation. A linear transformation Y equals AX, whose transformation matrix A is orthogonal, is called an orthogonal transformation. Uh, essentially, we take a vector, we apply a matrix, we get another vector. This is a transformation. In the special case, this is orthogonal, uh, we have an orthogonal transformation. The reason this definition is important is because orthogonal transformations leave certain things invariant. In particular, if you transform a dot product, its value stays the same under an orthogonal transformation. Um, the angle between vectors stays the same. If you transform each vector, the angle between the transformed vectors stays the same. Uh, this is the content of theorem 4. I'm going to leave it because it's expressed in a way which uh, we, we haven't done and I, I don't really want to spend time on. The important point, content of uh, theorem 4, is what I have said, that an orthogonal transformation leaves the value of a dot product between two vectors unchanged. So I take the dot product of two vectors, I get a certain value. If I transform the two vectors and take the dot product, and I transform by an orthogonal transformation, again, the value of the dot product stays the same. If I have an angle between two vectors, and if I transform the vectors under an orthogonal transformation, then the angle between the transformed vectors stays the same. Um, again, to repeat the contents of four, theorem four. Uh, problems, section 17.13, Prizig edition six, one, three, five, 23, 27, 31, 31. And 13, sorry. Uh, eigenvalues of Hermitian, skew Hermitian, and unitary matrices. The spectra of these matrices can be characterized in a general way and perhaps explain their importance. Uh, in other words, you can say something definite about the eigenvalues of, of these kind of matrices. Uh, let's just jump the solutions of your assignments. There's rather a lot. There we go. Uh, theorem 1, eigenvalues of Hermitian, skew Hermitian, and unitary matrices. The eigenvalues of a Hermitian matrix are real. Uh, this has a, an important application in quantum mechanics where observables are represented by linear Hermitian matrices in one representation of quantum mechanics. And since uh, the eigenvalues of a, a linear Hermitian operator are real, then you want the matrices representing such operas, operators that have real eigenvalues. So this is an important application of Hermitian matrices in quantum mechanics. The eigenvalues of a skew Hermitian matrix are pure imaginary or zero. The eigenvalues of a unitary matrix have absolute value one. Again, they may be complex. Um, so that their absolute value should be one. This is repeating uh, what we said earlier. Or, or, or at least it parallels what we said about it, the determinant uh, of unitary matrices. Again, the eigenvalues follow the same pattern as the determinant. Theorem two, eigenvalues of symmetric, skew symmetric, and orthogonal matrices. The eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix are real. The eigenvalues of a skew symmetric matrix are pure imaginary or zero. The eigenvalues of an orthogonal matrix have the absolute value one and are real or complex conjugate in pairs. Okay, this one maybe needs an example to explain what it means by complex conjugate in pairs. Uh, let's take an orthogonal matrix. You can check this is orthogonal by taking its transpose which should be equal to its inverse, and then multiplying out to get the unitary matrix. Now this has eigenvalues, lambda 1 equals 1 plus i root 2, lambda 2 is 1 minus i root 2. And this is actually what it means by complex conjugate in pairs. Then one eigenvalue is the complex conjugate of the other value.
Um, and you can check that the magnitude of these uh, eigenvalues is 1. By the normal thing with a complex number, the magnitude of a complex number. The z multiplied by the... If you take a complex number z, its magnitude is z multiplied by its complex conjugate, square rooted. Uh, again, some more problems. Section 7.14. 7 uh, questions 3, 9, 11, and 13. Okay, we conclude for today's lecture. Um, next lecture, properties of eigenvectors and diagonalization. Okay, so bye-bye for now.